Hi, I'm Nitin, and today I'm going to talk about our final project titled Traffic Sign Classification Using Convolutional Neural Networks. So what is the motivation behind doing this? Uh, traffic sign detection and classification is extremely useful in uh, driver advanced driver assistance systems where we can alert the driver whenever he's not following the traffic signs around him. Uh, also, traffic sign classification is a critical part of uh, self-driving cars uh, or autonomous driving vehicles. So the problem in definition here is you have to capture an image, uh, either RGB or grayscale, and detect a traffic sign board, and then classify the image into one of the classes from the data set. Uh, so here are some sample images from our data set. Uh, some of the examples are speed limit, no passing, and so on. Uh, traditional computer vision algorithms require a significant amount of effort to handcraft important features in the images. Also, they are not really uh, scalable when it comes to handling new images. So, so, we are looking to build a more automated approach for traffic sign classification, and that is when we decided to go with a deep learning based approach. So for the data set, we are using the German traffic sign uh, recognition benchmark, GTSRP data set. Uh, we are going to split the same data set into training, tests, and validation sets with the uh, following characteristics. Uh, we started off with a baseline model uh, from one of our references. So the baseline model uh, did not involve any sort of uh, pre-processing on the images, no data augmentation. Uh, it was a simple... Uh, convolution uh, neural network having two convolution layers followed by a single fully connected layer. So this baseline model uh, start, uh, gave us an accuracy of about 94.2% and uh, we are currently focusing on uh, tuning the hyperparameters of, these, of this baseline model uh, to improve the accuracy on the test set. The first step that we are doing is data augmentation. We are just trying to extend the data set by providing additional features and uh, different light settings and orientations. To perform data augmentation, we have used the Keras image generator, which does uh, real-time data augmentation per epoch. So there's a change in the rotation, or uh, scaling, and translation along the x and y axis in a random model. Another step involved in data pre-processing is uh, histogram equalization. So this is a computer vision technique where we increase the contrast in the images because some of our images are uh, really dark or they're blurry or they're really low contrast. So we are trying to enhance the contrast by uh, equalizing the histogram. Uh, we do this by using OpenCV's uh, contrast limiting adaptive histogram equalization function. Uh, since we are mostly working on images, uh, we are looking to build a CNN model or a convolution neural network model. Uh, we have about three to four convolution layers. Uh, each layer has a, a ReLU activation followed by max pooling. And the last two layers are uh, fully connected layers, with the last layer being a softmax activation, which gives us the probability of each class with respect to all the other classes in the data set. We performed some experiments to uh, tune the model to get the best hyperparameters. So we vary the convolution layers, uh, the number of convolution layers, the kernel sizes for convolution, the number of dense layers, the top out percentage, and so on. And some of our models uh, were overfitting. Some of them were uh, giving us low accuracy. So we shortlisted about two models, one with the convolution layer uh, with four convolution layers and three cross three kernel size, and the other with uh, three convolution layers with a five cross five kernel size. So here is one of the sample uh, training accuracy and loss curves from our training. So we had about 40k training images, uh, which took about one hour with 30 epochs. Uh, the total number of parameters were approximately about 1100k. So here we are just trying to visualize how the data looks like after each of the convolution layers. We just wanted to know uh, what the model is learning after each convolution layer. And uh, we can see the features being extracted uh, with each convolution layer. So coming to the results from each of our models, 
we experimented with a whole lot of configurations such as uh, grayscale rgb and for each grayscale and rgb we experimented with and without dropout uh, adding data augmentation uh, varying the dropout percentage uh, histogram equalization and so on so finally uh, we realized that the best model was with the three cross three kernel size for our convolution layers with the histogram equalization uh, along with data augmentation and a dropout of 0.5. The best model that we got gave us an accuracy of about 98.52% on the test set, which is about 4.3% better than the baseline model. So here are some uh, sample training uh, accuracy and loss, loss curves on the grayscale uh, images with uh, varying kernel sizes. And this is the uh, training curve uh, for the RGB images with uh, 3 cross 3 and 5 cross 5 kernels. That's it for today. Thank you.